For more on elements of the terror around the world, we go to former UK Member of Parliament George Galloway. George, thanks for joining us. This news out of New Mexico has shocked the world. How are people reacting in the United Kingdom and you personally to it? Well, it's a horrifying story, uh, I must say, and it accompanies uh, uh, another terrorist attack on the British Parliament just a few hundred yards from here, which appears to have happened today and captured on footage, so everyone has watched it endlessly. And it all brings back the fear of terror, which is very real, whatever its provenance, however we got here. There's no doubt that we need to defend ourselves against terrorists and their nefarious plans. The uh, motor car incident today in London, uh, if it looks like a duck, walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's probably a duck. And this was probably a terrorist attack. But we can't be entirely sure because the uh, suspect, uh, the driver of the car, who was pulled uh, at machine gun point from the driver's seat is completely refusing to cooperate with the police, won't even identify himself, let alone discuss a motive. Uh, but it very much looked like the kind of attack that was made on the British Parliament a year or so ago in which one police officer, whom I knew well, whom I spoke to every morning for decades as I drove into the Parliament building, was uh, stabbed to death in that previous terrorist attack on the building. Well, now, three people have been injured in today's attack. Two were hospitalized with non-life-threatening injuries. After this event happened, the driver slammed into the cyclist and pedestrians outside the Parliament building in London. Uh, as you said, the driver was arrested on suspicion of terror offenses, which we immediately went to, and he is not cooperating. Let's continue this conversation with the former uh, Member of Parliament, George Galloway, after this report from Anastasia Cherkina. We are as close as physically possible uh, to the Houses of Parliament. That area is now cordoned off, as you can see uh, behind me, while police now investigate what it is exactly that happened. What we do know is about 20 minutes before 8 in the morning, what is being described as a silver Ford Fiesta had hit cyclists and then crashed into security barriers right outside Houses of Parliament. Again, Parliament right now is in recess, so no MPs were present there at the time. And we know that armed police had arrested uh, one man and taken him to uh, into custody to a police station in South London where he is being questioned. Um, according to Scotland Yard, however, this man is uh, not cooperating with authorities quite yet. This is what they had to say. The driver of the Fiesta, who was alone in the vehicle, was arrested at the scene by armed officers who were already nearby. The man is in his late 20s and he's been arrested on suspicion of terrorism offences and has been taken to a South London police station where he remains in custody. Given that this appears to be a deliberate act, the method, and this being an iconic site, we are treating it as a terrorist incident and the investigation is being led by officers from the Counter-Terrorism Command. Uh, two people were injured and taken to hospital. It's understood that they're not in critical condition and are going to be fine following this attack. And we've been talking to a witness here, a local resident who saw it all with his own eyes. Let's take a listen to how he described what happened. I've seen uh, a car driving erratically towards House's apartment and they've actually hit the, one of the big bollards, the barriers. Did you see the man who was in the car who they arrested? Uh, yeah, I kind of saw, I think his hair was quite dark and he, uh, he was straight to share, I think, and he seemed quite calm to me. He didn't seem, he wasn't, I didn't see him, I didn't hear him screaming or anything or shouting and didn't re resist arrest. It's, it's worrying because I'm a father of two young sons, you know, age almost seven and five and a half, and it's worrying. I mean, but this, this is like this is one of this is like the the number one city in the world, in my opinion, is London. You know, there's so many tourists come here throughout the year, and you know, it's beautiful weather, and you know, another thing, I understand all the MPs are on holiday, so whoever 
planned this. I don't know what it's all about. Well, if confirmed by the police that this is a terrorist attack, it's going to turn out to be the first one this year, but unfortunately one of several to have taken place recently. George, what is the mood like in London after this all un unfamiliar normal scene, this incident? Well, stoic, you know, we've put up with uh, much worse uh, in the uh, Second World War. London was incessantly, constantly bombed, uh, particularly the East End, around St. Paul's Cathedral and so on. Uh, and, of course, in the 1970s, 80s and even 90s, uh, there was a war between the British state and the Irish Republican Army, which very frequently... Uh, came home to roost here in London and including uh, 10 Downing Street where the Prime Minister was sitting around a cabinet table and the uh, Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher you may recall came within inches of being blown up by an IRA bomb uh, in the 1980s so uh, I wouldn't want you to think there's any kind of state of panic uh, but people know that there's a very very unstable situation in the world and they also know that the British state contributed mightily to that uh, unstable uh, state in which uh, all these terrorist groups and this terrorist mindset has been morphing, curdling, uh, and uh, is uh, increasingly coming out of the swamp to harm us. Uh, people know that we contributed to this both directly and indirectly, directly by invading and occupying Arab Muslim countries indirectly because we have for decades supported the very brutal Arabic regimes uh, which uh, have repressed their people to the point of marginalization, radicalization, fanaticization of the kind uh, that we've seen quite often actually over the last couple of years uh, here in London. Well, George... And that's not to mention the ongoing problem uh, problems in the Middle East. Well, that's interesting. And let's bring it back to the events that happened today. This wasn't a typical vehicle used in a terror attack. Why are police jumping to terror almost immediately? Well, it's when you view the footage, it's quite likely that the intended targets were the two police officers standing in front of the barrier. But they managed to literally vault, scramble, over the wall and were missed and the car hit the barrier instead. Um, the car accelerated to 50 miles an hour, crossed the road uh, and mowed over bicyclists and went up what is a very narrow track, only room for one vehicle uh, at 50 miles an hour, which uh, it was about double the speed it was doing immediately beforehand. So as I say, if things look like a duck, quack like a duck, and uh, walk like a duck, they probably are ducks. And this probably, for whatever motive, it's not necessarily the same old motive. We don't know if this uh, suspect is a Muslim, for example. His name has not been released. But if terrorism can be defined as uh, trying to harm people for political purposes through unlawful violence, this looked pretty much like it to me. Well, thank you, George Gallery, for joining us. I'm sure daylight will bring even more details to the story.